An S8 static fire test is imminent. NASA successfully tests splice on Blue Origin's new Shepard rocket. SpaceX successfully launches Starlink V1 L13. And a new SpaceX HBO series. SpaceX conducted a series of cryogenic proof tests with S8 from Wednesday, October 7th through Thursday, October 8th. During the early morning test on October 7th, according to Elon, a small leak opened up near the engine mounts, possibly due to differential shrinking. SpaceX, though, was quickly able to resolve the problem and recommence testing during the early morning hours of October 8th and October 9th. Shortly after the third SN8 cryoproof test was completed, Elon confirmed on Twitter that SN8 successfully passed this phase of testing. With cryotesting complete, on Friday, October 9th, SpaceX proceeded to remove the thrust simulator from suborbital launch pad A. Over the weekend, on Sunday, October 11, two Raptor engines, serial numbers 32 and 39, arrived at the launch site and were installed on SN8. A day later, on October 13th, the third Raptor arrived on site and was installed. On Wednesday of this week, Elon took to Twitter to share a closer look at the Raptor engines now installed on SN8. He made sure to point out that once three vacuum engines are installed on future starships, it'll be a lot less roomy. Elon's photo also revealed the new locations for the COPVs. SpaceX has now scrapped two of the three Pathfinder nose cones, and on October 11, the forward flaps for the SN8 nose cone were moved into the nose cone tent. On October 12, the SN8 nose cone was spotted with the forward flaps installed. A static fire test with SN8 is now imminent. The first confirmed section for SN12 was spotted on September 30th. Now just two weeks later, the first SN14 component has been spotted, the methane downcomer. Work continues on SN9 in preparation for its flight tests, and SN10 stacking has now commenced. On Tuesday, October 13th, NASA conducted a test of its new lunar landing system on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket as part of a tipping point partnership. The launch occurred at 8.35 a.m. CDT from West Texas. In addition to NASA's new EDL system, Blue Origin also flew 11 payloads for commercial customers. This was the seventh flight for this particular New Shepard vehicle, and the first flight of New Shepard in 10 months. The system, SPLICE, or the Safe and Precise Landing Integrative Capabilities Evolution, is composed of a suite of technologies designed to help NASA land spacecraft autonomously on the Moon and other celestial bodies, with, as the name implies, increased precision. SPLICE has four main subsystems. Terrain Relative Navigation, Navigation Doppler LiDAR, Hazard Detection LiDAR, and the Descent and Landing Computer. On the most recent New Shepard flight, NS-13, NASA tested three of these, Terrain Relative Navigation, Navigation Doppler LiDAR, and the Descent and Landing Computer. Hazard detection will be tested in the future via ground and flight tests, according to NASA. In the case of the NS-13 flight, splice cameras and sensors were installed on the New Shepard booster's upper external structure. So how is NASA's new lunar landing system, SPLICE, different from other subsystems typically used to land spacecraft? Unlike Earth, other celestial bodies don't have a GPS network, just yet, that can be used to pinpoint or determine the spacecraft's altitude and velocity. Instead, scientists and engineers have typically relied on radar to determine the spacecraft's altitude and velocity relative to the surface. Well, instead of radar, radio waves, NASA's new system uses LIDAR, Light Image Detection and Ranging, or Pulse Lasers. One advantage of LIDAR over radar for spacecraft and landers is that LIDAR can be used to create a more precise image of the surface or terrain. Using terrain relative navigation, the spacecraft will scan the terrain comparing live data of terrain to a database of preloaded maps. By doing this, the spacecraft can search for an optimal landing location. Navigation Doppler LiDAR is then used as an improved and more precise way to determine the altitude and velocity of the spacecraft relative to the surface, ensuring a soft touchdown. The hazard detection LiDAR, which wasn't tested on NS-13, would then create a 3D map of the surface, detecting potential hazards and further refining or optimizing for an ideal landing location. The descent and landing computer more or less acts as the system's brain, seamlessly controlling all of these functions. 
not the first flight of the sensors. NASA has tested individual technologies in the suite before. For example, terrain relative navigation is employed on the Mars 2020 rover, Perseverance, and navigation Doppler LiDAR tech has been tested on NASA's Morpheus and on Masson's Zodiac through Psionic. This is the first time, though, that NASA has conducted a test with the integrated system, minus, of course, the hazard detection LiDAR. According to a statement on Blue Origin's website, the technologies could allow future missions, both crewed and robotic, to target landing sites that weren't possible during the Apollo missions, such as regions with varied terrain near craters. Achieving high-accuracy landing will enable long-term lunar exploration and future Mars missions. HBO's SpaceX is a very exciting time for the space industry, and Hollywood appears to be taking close note. There's been a lot of series and movies focused on space lately, and it now looks like HBO is producing a series about SpaceX. The six-episode series, simply titled SpaceX, will chronicle Elon's and SpaceX's origin story, the early days of the company with the Falcon 1 launches from SpaceX's launch facility in Omelette Island, Kwajalein Atoll, Marshall Islands, through SpaceX's historic Demo 2 launch, SpaceX's first crewed launch. According to an article from The Hollywood Reporter, the series will be based on Ashley Vance's Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and the quest for a fantastic future. The show will be executive produced by Channing Tatum and his production company, along with Len Amato, Peter Kiernan of Free Association, and Ashley Vance. The book will be adapted by Doug Young. Young will also act as an executive producer. Elon is not involved in the project.